Hello, this is Mrs. Often, and today we're going to talk about vector operations. We're going to talk about three main vector operations. Vector addition, multiplication of a vector by a scalar, and the dot product of two vectors. I want to point out that we will not be multiplying one vector by another. In fact, multiplication is not defined for vectors. We can only multiply a vector by a scalar. The first thing that we're going to talk about is addition and scalar multiplication. This is the algebraic approach that I want to discuss first. If I'm given two vectors, u and v, and u has a component form of u1, comma, u2, and v has a component form of v1, comma, v2. To add the vectors u and v, I simply add their components, u1 plus v1, u2 plus v2. So that's vector addition. Just add the components. If I want to multiply the vector u by a scalar value, k, then I multiply k times the first component, u1, and times the second component, u2. So let's practice this using the vectors u, component form 1, 6, and v, component form negative 3, 2. To add together u and v, I'm going to add the components. 1 plus negative 3 is negative 2. The second component, the y component, 6 plus 2 is 8. So my vector sum, u plus v, is negative 2, comma, 8. I could also multiply u by the scalar value, negative 3. This is similar to the distributive property. I'm going to multiply the first component of u, 1, by negative 3. That's going to give me negative 3. Then I'll multiply 6, the y component of u, and I'll get negative 18. So that's the algebraic approach to addition and scalar multiplication. I think it's pretty straightforward and looks a lot like you would kind of expect it to. Remember to add the components in the order that they appear. We also can define addition and scalar multiplication using a graphical approach. So I have some pictures here showing the addition of two vectors, the subtraction of vectors, and scalar multiplication. Looking at these pictures, I have two vectors, 4, 1. You'll notice it goes to 4 on the x-axis and up 1 along the y-axis. And another vector, 3, 4. Now, if I were to add 4, 1 and 3, 4, I would get 7, 5. The graphical approach tells us why this happens. If I shift this 3, 4 vector over so that its initial point is at the terminal point of the vector 4, 1, and I just follow that along, then I'm going to go write an additional three spaces. I'll also go up an additional four spaces, and I'll end up at that terminal point, 7, 5. So this is a graphical representation of addition. If I have two vectors that I want to subtract, let's say that I have vector u, and here's vector v, and I want to subtract u minus v. Well, the first thing I need to think of is, what is minus v? It's just v, but with the opposite components. So like multiplying each of those components by negative 1. I'll move that negative v vector so that its initial point is at the terminal point of u. And then using this head-to-tail method, I can draw a graphical representation of u minus v. Finally, in scalar multiplication, I have two things being shown here. I'm just going to trace over vector v in red. So there's vector v. Now, if I multiply that vector v 
by a value greater than 1, it's going to be stretched out. It's going to get that many times longer. If I multiply the vector v by a number that's between 0 and 1, it will shrink down. It'll get shorter. Its direction won't change at all. It'll just stretch or shrink. If I multiply it by a negative value, it's going to point 180 degrees in the other direction. And depending upon that value, if it's between negative 1 and 0, it'll be shorter and pointing in the opposite direction. If it's less than negative 1, it'll be longer but pointing in the opposite direction. So these are graphical representations of addition and scalar multiplication. I think they're especially important when we're working in word problems, especially in physics. Okay, now this slide is very important. You should copy all of these properties down because I, I'm going to be asking you to compare these properties of vectors with properties of real numbers and maybe even of polynomials. So you should think about how these vectors are related to other things that we've studied. Our first property is that u plus v is equal to v plus u. So in vector addition, the order does not matter. Our second property is that u plus the sum of v plus w, these are all vectors here, is equal to the sum of u plus v plus vector w. This is similar to the associative property of real numbers that allows you to move the parentheses around. If I add the zero vector to u, then I get the same vector back. If I add the vector u and its opposite, I get the zero vector. Now here for numbers 5 through 9, I've switched some colors. C and D represent um, scalar values, so these are not vectors. If I multiply the scalar C times the product of D times the vector U, then I could have just multiplied my two scalar values together and then multiplied it by the vector U. Do whatever is most convenient. If I have two scalars added together, say the numbers 2 and 3, and then that is multiplied by the vector u, that gives me the same result as if I had taken the first scalar and multiplied it by the vector, taken the second scalar and multiplied it by the vector, and then added the two things together. I think this looks a lot like the distributive law of numbers. And we see kind of the same thing happening here, only the scalar is distributing over a vector sum. So C multiplied by the sum of the two vectors u and v is equal to Cu plus Cv. Um, if I multiply the vector u by the scalar 1, I still get the vector u back. If I multiply the vector u by the scalar 0, I get the 0 vector. And finally, the magnitude of a vector multiplied by a scalar is equal to the magnitude of the vector multiplied by the absolute value of the scalar. It's going to be the absolute value of the scalar because a scalar can be negative or positive, but magnitude measures length. It's always going to be positive. Okay, so these are the properties of addition and scalar multiplication. And again, think about how these are related to other properties that we already know for different types of numbers. The final vector operation that we look at is the dot product. And the dot product has a symbol, it's a dot, and it looks a lot like multiplication. It is not multiplication. It's kind of this weird combination of multiplication and addition. So again, we're going to think of our vectors u being u1 and u2, and v, v1, and v2. So to find the dot product of u with v, 
I multiply the x components together, u1 times v1. I multiply the y components together, u2 times v2. And then I add those two answers together. The answer is always going to be a scalar. Okay, so this solution for a dot product is going to be a scalar. We're going to look at two examples of this. Our first example, u equals negative 1, 2, and v equals 6, 5. I'm going to work all this out because I'm sure you haven't seen the dot product before. So I have negative 1 times 6 is negative 6. 2 times 5 is 10. I'm going to add those two numbers together and get a value of 4. This scalar represents the dot product of u with v. And a lot of times you'll hear this as u dotted with v. So our two new vectors here, a, 5, 0, and b, 0, 6. Now if you picture those, the vector a, 5, 0, is right along the x-axis. The vector b is right along the y-axis. So they're at right angles to each other. Let's see what happens with this dot product. I have 5 times 0 is 0. And then I have 0 times 6. Well, that's also 0. When I add these two together, I get a dot product of 0. So these two vectors that are at right angles to each other have a dot product of 0 which I think is interesting and which we'll discuss more in another video. Now, just like addition and scalar multiplication, there's a few properties of the dot product that you should know. And again, think about how these may be related to other types of numbers that you have worked with or other types of number-like things, like polynomials. The dot product is, again, commutative u dotted with v gives the same result as v dotted with u. u dotted with the zero vector gives zero the scalar back again. And I should probably change this from blue to red because red was my scalar quantity. Okay. The dot product distributes over vector addition. So I could add these two vectors. Or I could find the dot product, find the dot product, and add. And this final answer here will be a scalar. Now, in another thing, I think this is kind of interesting. A vector dotted with itself is equal to the square of that vector's magnitude. You should think about, based on what you know about magnitude, why this is true. Then finally, scalar multiplication does not distribute over the dot product. So I have a scalar, C, that's multiplying u dotted with v. And notice that I could rewrite that as C times u, then dot it with v. Or I could do C times v, and then dot that with u. So I don't distribute that scalar multiplication over the dot product. And those are your properties of vector addition, subtraction, and the dot product.